everybody. Good to see you this morning as we look to the uh, holidays and the Thanksgiving uh, day coming up. We're glad that you're here on another beautiful Sunday morning, and we appreciate your faithfulness. All right, let's get ready to enjoy the time of worshiping and praising our Savior as Barry comes to lead us. Well, all right, let's all stand, open up your hymnal to 164. 164. Praise him, praise him. <clears throat> praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises. Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, strong, and true. <laughs> Tim, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Turn around and say hello to somebody. They write words on there so you can know what to say. I never know if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter work is good like a Redeemer, heavenly portals, loud. 
child with Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you again this morning. Glad that you are here. And as we open in prayer this morning, let's continue to pray for Tom Rep. Uh, still uh, physically down. Uh, the Sansonetti family, also physically down. Uh, John uh, Lomahan is traveling home this week, so pray for that as well as uh, Jennifer's niece, Dana. Did I get that right? Traveling, so traveling mercies there. We've been asked to pray for a Lynn Stottlemyer, physical need there. Also, uh, Brother Murphy's brother, Donald with a physical need there. Mike Myers has a procedure, physical procedure tomorrow morning that he's asked us to keep in prayer and that everything will go well for that. And then Sheila Suters has asked us to pray for a, a special unspoken uh, request for the family there. So a lot of things. What? Oh yeah, Francis Pinner. Yes, let's remember to pray for Francis Pinner. Also with a physical need, all right? Birthdays. Hey, we got Becky Bedinger's birthday coming up. Uh, Gabby Gachillian's birthday is coming up. Bryson Blair turns 100 today. Uh, Sid Dooley has a birthday coming up. And Adeline Gastrock. Amen. So we've got some birthdays and we want to wish them all a very happy birthday. Appreciate it. Yes. Rena's birthday's today. Well, I didn't see that. I am sorry. Well, happy birthday, Rena. Amen. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> and you don't look a day over 90. So there. All right. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to have a little fun in the church. You said, I didn't see you. You slipped in. Happy birthday coming up. Amen. Good. Yeah, I, I'm getting to recognize people from here up. We went to the uh, Walmart last night and, uh, uh, you know, to do some shopping. And uh, I was walking down the, the aisle and this lady grabs me and said, Hey, Pastor, how you doing? And I looked at her and said, Yeah, I'm doing fine. I don't know who you are. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess people are starting to kind of get to know you, so... Amen. That's a strange day we live in, isn't it? And uh, we're going to have to just uh, make do with what we've got. God bless. Brother Dave Ritter, would you open the service this morning in prayer, sir? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right. Remain standing. Hymn number 223. 223. Springs of Living Water. <clears throat> I thirsted in a barren land of sin and shame, and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. How sweet the living water from the hills of God. 
It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free, where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Amen. You may be seated. We have a good many announcements in our bulletin. Let's look at that together. Do want to remind everyone about this Tuesday evening for our Thanksgiving service. You know, we also call this our giving of thanks service because that's when we will be taking and giving testimony to the Lord, the goodness of the Lord that he's done this past year. So please be ready to give a testimony. Also, uh, if you have not saw Barry, Brother Barry yet about like to do a special Tuesday night, maybe in music, uh, singing, or doing something, please make sure you see him today so he can get that uh, kind of down and in order. So please help us out. The Lord has given you an ability to sing, play an instrument. Please use that. Uh, for the Lord. Then we'll have a special speaker on uh, Tuesday evening as well. Pastor Kerry Nance will be with us as he'll be up for the uh, Thanksgiving uh, week. So that'll be another ed of blessing that we'll be having Tuesday night. Remember, we will not be having the meal on Tuesday evening, but we will be having our service. And our service uh, will be held, of course, here in the auditorium, uh, just like we would on a regular uh, Thanksgiving uh, service. And remember, that takes the place of our Wednesday evening service uh, this week. Full board meeting men, please take note on Monday evening, November 30th at 7 o'clock p.m., where they'll be discussing uh, the upcoming budget for 2021. Also, please make note, the uh, there would not be an Iron Men's Breakfast on the first week of December, neither any Season Saints meeting. Uh, we'll be kind of like going to week with week to week with uh, like uh, with what we usually do uh, just because of uh, with the um, restrictions and recommendations that are given to us. So we will hold off on those. However, we will still have our family prayer time on Saturday evening, December the 5th, 6 o'clock p.m. church. So please make sure you have that on your calendar and be here once again as we have much to be in prayer about. Uh, ladies, please make note of the uh, Above Ruby's Christmas meeting that they'll be having on December 8th, Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock. Uh, the theme is My Favorite Things. And so what you need to do is bring a gift of no more than $5 of something that maybe is your favorite to use up, up for a game that will be playing. And that will be upstairs in the fellowship hall. And they are asking the ladies to wear a mask and they will be social distancing. But uh, just want to keep things going with Christmas and different things that we can. So ladies, hopefully you can uh, come out. Is there a sign-up sheet in the hallway already? Sign-up sheet. So please help because of getting all the tables and everything prepared. Please make sure you sign up today, ladies, for the Above Rubies for December. Widows Christmas Luncheon, our annual Christmas Luncheon. As of right now, we are still going to plan on having that on December 1st. Hagerstown Family Diner, you will be given a invitation. You've probably already received it. Please get that turned back in. And as long as nothing changes at the restaurants, we'll can set no more at a six at a table, but it'll still be a chance that we can get together with our widows. So as, as of right now, we'll still be able to do that. Children's Christmas party. This is for ages three through sixth grade. It's going to be held on Saturday, December 5th at the pastor's house from one o'clock to three o'clock. Uh, they will, transportation will be provided from here at the church. Uh, you will be contacted if you have a child uh, in that um, age group to see how many is coming. And then they are going to ask that the children please wear a mask. Uh, they will have refreshments, games, and little gifts for the children. Just be a good time as well uh, to celebrate with the children. So hopefully they can come with that. 
If you need transportation as well, please make sure you let us know if you will be needing that transportation to the uh, pastor's home on that day. Uh, Grand Paul's Remember, that's our, ch our Christmas program that's coming up on Sunday, December 13th at 10 o'clock uh, here in the auditorium for our Sunday school service that day. Uh, children and teens are, are preparing and they'll be participating uh, in the singing and in the play uh, that we'll be having. So, uh, uh, keep that in mind. And then we do have, if you have children and teenagers, we have two practices scheduled in December. One is Thursday evening uh, on December 10th at 6.30 p.m. That way we will have the spotlight and we can kind of go through. It's very important that they, everyone is here going through everything. And then we will also have another practice the day before. Uh, the play with December 12th on that Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning as well, where we can kind of, that'll be a dress rehearsal. We go through everything. And so please keep that in mind, parents. Very, very important that they are here for those practices so they know exactly what uh, is going on that time. Thank you. Amen. I just wanted to make mention in case somebody would be concerned. Uh, our son-in-law and daughter, of course, are coming up from Florida to be with us and be here for the Tuesday night service. Uh, they are over the COVID. They both had it. They are 100%. There's no problem. In fact, doctors say that after you've had it, uh, you've got a at least three to four months uh, where you cannot contract it again at least that long because of the antibodies. So uh, they're, they're 100%. They're doing well. And so there should be no problem. And so I just wanted to say that in case there would be some concern about uh, them coming up from Florida and traveling. I know that there are certain restrictions in different areas. So just to let you know that, all right? But I hope you'll plan on being here. Listen, I know that we're not having the dinner, and I hate that. Uh, this is the 25th time since I've been pastor that we've had the celebration of our church. And this is the first time that we've not been able to, to host the dinner. And I hate that. I've always enjoyed the fellowship and the, and the food and all the time together. But the service is still the important, important part. And that will still be going on. So let me encourage you just to make plans. Uh, make that a part of your holiday. Invite someone to come. Uh, I think they would enjoy that. Uh, just a time together as we praise the Lord, give testimonies, uh, have some uh, folks involved in the service as well, and then a, a challenge from the Word of God uh, from a great preacher, and I know it'll mean much. And then let me just say something also about the Christmas program that's being prepared by the, the young people. Uh, let me encourage you to not only be faithful to the Sunday school hour that day, but also uh, invite someone to come. You know, a lot of churches right now are stopping a lot of things. They're not doing a lot of stuff. People are really hurting out, th out there. And so this is a way to bring in some folks, uh, invite them to a Christmas program uh, put on by kids. And a lot of times people will come for those things. Uh, we're not able to have the choir. Uh, normally we do a choir special, and I hate that, again, that we can't do that uh, simply because of the social distancing idea. And the mask, nobody can sing through a mask. And so, uh, but let's invite, as we can, invite people to come. And who knows what the Lord will do through that. So let's be found faithful, and let's be faithful, and the Lord will bless us. Amen? All right, Eric. All right, let's all stand. Hymn number 143. Hymn number 143. Blessed Assurance. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture.
rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. <clears throat> And uh, in just a moment, Barry and, and Jessica will be singing, and that's always a blessing. You listen as they minister uh, to us uh, through song this morning. sights I'll see, the walls of jasper, gates of pearl, the clear and golden streets. Why should I be present? Why should I enter in? After all the sinful living, and the wicked one I've been in the presence of Jehovah as I stand before the throne the accuser of the brethren he starts to read the things I've done as I hear the awful charges the question fills my mind why should i not be put in hell to suffer for all time it's through the blood that's all i have to plead it's through the blood that Jesus shed for me, not by works of my own righteousness, for filthy rags are they, but because of what Christ did for me, hanging on dark Calvary. This is my only plea, it's through the blood. When I'm walking through a valley, and I feel there's no way out, when the winds of sorrow threaten me, and they turn my world around, then I look to Jesus and the price he paid for me. I can lift my hands in praise to him and shout the victory. It's through the 
blood that's all i have to bleed it's through the blood that jesus shed for me not by works of my own righteousness for filthy rags are they but because of what Christ did for me, hanging on dark Calvary, this is my only plea, it's through the blood. But because of what Christ did for me, hanging on dark Calvary, this is my only bleed, it's through the blood. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I'm glad for that blood that we have as the only plead. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me, if you will, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Starting in verse number 51, you follow as I read to the end of the chapter, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 51. Paul's writing to the church at Corinth and he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at verse 57. It says, but thanks be to God. Wow, what a day. Thanks be to God. And that's exactly what we want to talk about this morning. How can we thank God? How can we demonstrate our thanks to God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today again for this time together. And Lord, certainly thankful as we think of this week, Lord, the holiday that has been established, been set aside. And Lord, uh, a time to reflect and remember the goodness, the grace, the blessings, the outpouring love of our Heavenly Father. And certainly, Lord, uh, we're, we are and should be a thankful people. And Lord, it's good to to praise you. It's good to uh, thank you uh, verbally. But Lord, how can we really thank you? How can we demonstrate our thankfulness? And so this morning, I ask that, Lord, you would help us in the next few moments to help me to share that which you've given to me, that, Lord, we might learn this week and throughout the rest of our time here on earth, how we can truly demonstrate how thankful we are. Now bless, I pray, the next few moments. Thank you already for what you'll do, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Bible says, but thanks be to God. We ought to be thankful that we have victory over death. Amen. We ought to be thankful that we have victory over the grave. We ought to be thankful today that we have victory over sin. We don't have to sin. We've got power above us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
Certainly, uh, we ought to be thankful for the, the fact of our salvation and for, for heaven and knowing that we have an eternal home that will never vanish away, never perish, but that we will be reunited with all the loved ones before us that have passed on. So we ought to be thankful to God for the victory that he has given through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have this week that we have set aside. Of course, uh, we know Thursday is uh, Thanksgiving, a day that we recognize, a time that we can uh, sit and, and reflect and remember, and certainly uh, not only thankful uh, for family and thankful for the earthly things that we have, but we ought to take time as Christians to be thankful for what God has done and who God is in our life. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20 it says that we are to giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. We are instructed throughout the Bible that we are to be thankful. We are, have been commanded, literally, that we're to be a thankful people and thankful unto God. Take your Bibles and turn to back to the book of Psalm, Psalm 136, if you will. Psalm 136. And notice with me from verse number one. The psalmist is writing, he says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Aren't you glad for the mercy of God? Amen. And that it endures for all time? Verse number two, O th give thanks unto God of God's. For his mercy endureth forever. Once again, we're reminded of his mercy. And then verse three, O give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. And we are commanded, we are instructed to truly be a thankful, thankful people. And if any people ought to be thankful to God and for what he's done, I believe it ought to be us who know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, personally, who have been saved and are secured in him. Every day, aren't you glad that God loadeth us with benefits? He blesses us every day. This morning when I woke up, I was glad that I could open my eyes and see. I was glad that I had the strength to get up and to get out of bed. And I'm thankful that there was uh, water that I could take a shower and brush my teeth and, and shave and, and all the wonderful things. I'm glad that I live in this wonderful nation that God has allowed. There are so many things that God blesses us with every, every day. Certainly for his grace and mercy. We ought to be thankful for we are saved by faith, by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. And so we ought to be thankful for his long suffering and his patience uh, to us and with us. We ought to be thankful. I'm so glad that my God's a, a long suffering, patient God with me. I'm glad that when I fail him, he doesn't smack me right off the bat. He gives me an opportunity to recognize and then get it right. And I'm so glad that he does. We ought to be thankful for the blessings that he gives that we do not deserve. We ought to be thankful for those. In James chapter 1 and verse 17, it says this, and we're familiar with it, but it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I want you to realize that every good gift does not come from the government. Amen. It doesn't come from those people that sit in the uh, Congress or the Senate or even in the White House. But every good gift, every perfect gift cometh down from above. And that is God from God himself. We have always taught our children from the time they were little that when somebody did something for you, you ought to say thank you. But we also instructed them that they ought to do something to demonstrate that thankfulness by maybe a little thank you card or doing something in return for that. And I believe it is. Saying thanks is one thing and we ought to be a thankful people. If somebody does something for us, we ought to be willing to say thank you. And if, if God has done something, we ought to be willing to say thank you. But 
saying it is one thing, but demonstrating our thankfulness is an entirely different thing. And we need to get to the place where I believe we ought to be willing to demonstrate. I believe God wants us to say thank you uh, for all that he's done for us. But I also believe he wants us to demonstrate that thankfulness. And so how can we today demonstrate our thankfulness to God? What would be involved in me not just saying, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for all the things that you've done for me this week. Thank you for the way that you've secured my soul. Thank you for the possibility and that blessed hope of knowing one day I'm going to be in heaven. But how can I demonstrate that thankfulness out of a thankful heart? Well, let me share some things I believe that we can do. First of all, I believe we can show our, our thankfulness by proving his promises. Proving his promises. Romans chapter 4 and verse 21 says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. We can only prove the promises of God by faith. Isn't that true? That's how we prove the promises of God. And faith always pleases God. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And we want to please him. The promises of God can only be effective in our lives as we prove those promises. They will only be a blessing to us as not only we believe they're there, but then to act upon those promises by faith and demonstrate it. The more we recognize his promises are being fulfilled in, in our lives by faith, then the more he will continue to perform those promises in our lives. You know, many miss out today, I think, on the great blessings of God because they fail to take advantage of the promises by acting on faith. Think about that. Remember when Moses came to the Red Sea after, of course, God promised that if he go, he would deliver his people. And he went through all those problems with Pharaoh. And finally, they were able to leave. And, and so they thought everything was fine. And they came to the Red Sea. And they, they faced that great uh, barrier of going into the land. And then behind them came the Egyptian army that was ready to uh, literally take all of their lives and all the rest of it. And God had promised them, though, that he was going to deliver them. The people began to murmur and to complain about the promises of God. But Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of your God. He had faith in the promise of God. And as God told him to raise that staff over that Red Sea, think about what happened. Those waters parted and they were able to cross on that dry ground, not wet, muddy ground, but dry ground to the safety of it. And then not only on the other side, as they stood there and as the Egyptian army also started to cross, God then closed it all back up and took care of the army, thereby protecting them and delivering them. My God's promises you can go to the bank on. But it has to be acted upon by faith. And faith pleases God. When Elijah trusted the promises of God by faith, as he went that day up on Mount Carmel, and he debated with those prophets of Baal, and he watched them, and he stood there, as he built, rebuilt the altar, caused all the water to be poured upon it. And then he got down and just prayed and said, God, I'm trusting you in your promise to prove yourself real. And God sent the fire and not only took care of the sacrifice, but even the altar itself and licked up all the dust around it. I want you to know that's my God. Amen. Noah. One day he got the voice of God to come to him and said, I want you to build an ark. He said, but God, I, I live in a place where there's no rivers, no water. It's not ever rained. And he said, but I want you to build the ark because I'm going to destroy this world. But I want you to do what you can. For 120 years on, on faith, on the promise of God, he labored and labored and labored and witnessed and witnessed and witnessed. And the only ones that were able to, to see the fruit of his witness, as witnessing and his preaching was his own family. But that day as they got into the ark and God shut that door and sealed it, the rain began to fall. And I, I can imagine Noah 
with his family standing in that ark that day as the waters began to rise and all of a sudden that ark began to float. And as it started to rise up on those old angry waves, as it preserved him and his family, I can imagine how excited Noah was to believe the promises of God and to prove them. And I believe God was honored and God was blessed and God was pleased that Noah had listened and acted upon those promises. I think God has given us promises, amen? If you're saved today, you, by faith, acted upon the one of the greatest promises given in the book, in the Bible. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Boy, I'm so glad that that day when God convicted my heart and showed me that I was a lost sinner. Oh, I was working with teenagers. I was a member of a church, a good, independent, fundamental Baptist church. I had been baptized. I had gone through all of it. But that day as I was sitting on the front pew of that church and God began to work in my heart and say, Jim Moore, you've got all the outside trappings. You look good. You smell good. You're involved in all the things that are good. But you've never trusted me personally as your Savior. And I'm glad that day as I called out to him by faith in that promise that if I would call, he would answer and he'd give me eternal life. And I'm excited today for the faith that God has. And I want him to know I appreciate him. I want him to know I'm thankful for what he's done. And I want him to know I want to demonstrate what he's done for me. God is pleased when we prove his promises by acting on that faith as a way to demonstrate, certainly, our thankfulness to Him. Let me ask you today, have you thanked God by acting on His promises? What are you doing today with your life for the cause of Christ? Are you accomplishing God's purpose in your life? And then secondly, I think we can thank God, not just by words, but by actions, when we also practice his presence in our life. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. When Bonnie and I are able to spend time together, it's a joy to me. I just enjoy that time together. My heart goes out to those who have lost a mate Go those who have been separated over distances. My, my heart goes out to the military today, those that are separated by distance. I, 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 I don't like that. I believe the Lord loves to have his people recognize his presence every day in their life. I'm glad he walks with me. I'm glad he talks with me. I'm glad he wants to bless me along the way. I'm glad that I'm never alone, even when I am alone. I'm glad that he's there with me and he's never forsaken me. And I want to practice his presence. When's the last time you said to the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for being with me right now in this situation that I'm at, with the problems that I'm facing, with the things that I may be going through, I want you to know, Lord, I'm glad that you you are with me. Amen. Amen. Today we can't have groups of people. That's why we can't have the dinner on Tuesday night. Because of the fact that you can't uh, supposedly get together unless it's a service. That's why we're having the service instead. But the fact is, is that it doesn't matter if we've got multitudes of people or if I'm by myself. I am so glad that God is there. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's there in the person of the Holy Spirit. And he lives right here inside of me. And you know, we need to practice his presence daily. When's the last time you spoke to the Holy Spirit? When's the last time? Now, I'm not talking about being spooky. I'm talking about recognizing that he is in you. We're sealed onto the day of redemption. Amen. And that seal is the person of the Holy Spirit living inside. And what we need to do is learn to practice and to understand 
the presence of God in our lives. One way I think we demonstrate our thankfulness to God is by being aware of his presence daily, by talking with him and fellowshipping with him. I want you to know, one reason I love church is because we can fellowship together. Oh, you can. And when we were locked down at home, I, I made some phone calls and talked to people, and that was good. But that wasn't the intimate fellowship. That wasn't shaking a hand. It wasn't saying, hi, how you doing? It wasn't embracing somebody. It was simply uh, speaking. There is two different things. When, when my wife and I, and I shared this the other day, when my wife and I are in the home together and we're there, yes, our presence is there, but if I don't ever recognize her presence, if I don't come up to her and hug her once in a while and pat her on the head once in a while and, and let her know that I love her, I want you to realize she's going to wonder what's going on. And so many times the Holy Spirit lives right here. Thank you, honey. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'll answer for it later. <laughs> but the problem is he's right here. And when's the last time we, we had a time of fellowship with him on that close, intimate time together of fellowshipping and letting him know how much we appreciate the fact that he's never left me. He's never left me alone. Uh, so many times we make decisions without ever consulting the Holy Spirit or God himself. I think he wants to be a part of that. You think about all the trials that Joseph went through, being alone in prison, being alone, taken, put into that pit, and, and then sold into slavery. I can imagine how it must have felt. I can remember how it felt for me the day that I left my home, my family, my my. Uh, uh, my uh, bride-to-be and uh, got on that bus and went down to the induction center and then off to basic training. And I can remember, even though there were groups of men around me and we were all heading the same way, there was a loneliness in my life. There was no one else that really uh, felt like, I mean, they all had their feelings and I'm sure there were many of those that felt the same way. But the fact is, is that there was a, 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 a feeling of being alone, even in the midst of a crowd. But I'm, as Joseph would have been in that procession going down to Egypt and then being sold to Potiphar and, and working there and, and then go being placed in prison. I can imagine how he must have felt being alone through that whole thing. But I want you to know that he wasn't alone because God was still with him. And that's what gave him the strength. Can you imagine Daniel? That young boy being taken away from his home, placed there in that strange country, and yet his dedication to God constantly, even though the, the law had been written that said no more could you ask of any petition from any other God other than the king. And yet every day, three times a day, he would open his windows and he would be found faithful in his prayer life. Because of that, he ended up being tossed into that lion's den. And I can imagine how, how it must have been as he, he was lowered into that pit with those hungry lions. And maybe there was fear. Maybe there was some concern about what would happen. But when he got down into that pit and he stood there, and I believe through the night, he prayed and he thanked God that his presence was there as that God of heaven closed the mouth of those lions and they would not harm him. And he recognized that God's presence was there even in the pit where he was. I'm so glad that I can't escape the very presence of God. Oh, we ought to acknowledge his presence. We ought to welcome his presence. And certainly we ought to practice his presence 
in our lives as we walk daily. When's the last time, as I said before, that you were facing a decision and you communicated with God as to what you ought to do before you decided what to do. And you let God be God in your life. You know, that's practicing the presence of God and the ability of God to do what God wants to do. And I believe that pleases him. I believe that demonstrates how thankful we are that he did not leave us alone. You know, he could have saved us and said, that's it. I'm not going to give you anything, anyone to give you the power to live the Christian life. I'm not going to give you that seal that will seal you on to the day of redemption. Aren't you glad that you don't have to worry about losing your salvation? Because you've been sealed? I'm glad. And I think what we ought to do is be well welcoming and understanding and practicing his presence in our lives by demonstrating how thankful we are. You know, I went to bed last night. He was there. I woke up this morning and he was there. When I went through that heart attack and had that doctor standing there doing the things that he did, putting those stints in, I want you to know he was there. He never leaves me. And he'll never forsake me. And I want him to know how thankful I am that I have my, my God standing on my side to fight for me if I need it. To give me the strength that I need when I need it to live for him. Oh, practice his presence. Don't ignore him. The worst thing in the world is to be ignored by somebody. And I think that grieves God. When we do not recognize and practice his presence in our lives. And then I think also we can thank and demonstrate our thankfulness to God by promoting his purpose. First John chapter three and verse five says, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. One way we can demonstrate our appreciation and our thankfulness to God is to promote what he came to do, what he came to accomplish, what he's done in your life. He wants to do in other lives. Amen. Uh, I, if I went around the crowd today and asked you, aren't you glad that you've got eternal life? Aren't you glad that you're going to go to heaven? Aren't you glad you don't have to worry about the place called hell? Aren't you glad that you can uh, live this life and not worry about uh, where you're going to spend if your life is snuffed out in a moment? I want you to know other people around you want that same peace and assurance. And he came that we might know that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that every person will come to repentance and trust him as Savior. And the way that I can show how appreciative I am, how thankful I am of having my salvation is simply by sharing that wonderful gift with people who do not have it and still are in need of it. To promote, to promote what he came to do. This can be accomplished by every time I hand out a track. Every time I give an invitation to somebody to come to church. Every time I have the privilege to sit down and to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with someone else. That is promoting his purpose. Why he came. I think every time you hand out a track, it pleases God. Every time you give an invitation to come to church. That pleases God. And certainly I know that every time we can witness to somebody, that pleases God. And I believe it demonstrates how thankful and assurance we are that I have. It. You know, if I gave you a gift today, if I, if I, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a gift right now. Lord gives me some illustrations. He just doesn't give me all the particulars of it. Let's say I, I went out and bought one of those new uh, uh, Keurig coffee makers. Uh, the one that's got the four nozzle thing now today. I saw it advertised on TV. Now it's supposed to make your coffee taste better and smell better. And men, improvements all the time. But anyway, if I, if I went out and bought that, I don't know what it cost. They, they didn't say. I'd say probably close to 100 bucks, if not a little more. And I bought that thing for you. 
And I went over to your house and I said, boy, you have just been a blessing to me. And I want you to know how much I appreciate you. And so I'm going to give you this coffee uh, maker, this curing thing. And, oh, you said, thank you. That's wonderful. I appreciate that. I've seen them and I was wondering how they were. And I just wanted, well, thank you for that. And that's a verbal expression of thankfulness, isn't it? So let's say I come back in two weeks to visit you and you sit down and, and uh, say, you want a cup of coffee? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to tasting that rich new flavor and the smell that comes out of the curing. And you go over to your old coffee pot, the one that sits on the, the thing, and you make a big old pot of coffee and water and you throw it in the thing and put the grounds in the top and you slob it in there and say, it'll take about 10 minutes, but we'll have a cup of coffee. Well, I guess you didn't appreciate my presence very much, did you? You aren't really thankful because you're not using it. You fail. I mean, it's there. It's sitting on your counter. But you haven't even plugged it in. You haven't even made an attempt to taste the new rich flavor. And who knows? It might be better than that old coffee pot you got. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I spent a hundred bucks to go out and buy that thing. I, I took the time to wrap it up maybe and walk over or drive over to your home and, and give it to you and, and, and all the rest of it. And it's not even being used. You know, sometimes I think God looks down and he says, listen, I sent you the very best gift I had, my own son. And Jesus said, I gave you the best gift I could. I went to the cross and gave my life so that you could have life everlasting. And you did. You, you prayed and you said, oh, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. You sing that song and, oh, we thankful for God. But you're not willing to share with others what you've done, what I've done for you. You're not promoting the purpose I came. Are you really thankful? Are you really rejoicing? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9.15. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. The gift of salvation so, so precious. That we can't even have words to describe it. It's unspeakable. I, I don't know how to define my salvation except by saying how thankful I am and I'm glad I'm saved. But you know what? I can show how thankful I am by demonstrating that to others. I have the gift of eternal life and I want you to have it. I know you need it. I want others to share in the gift that I have that demonstrates how truly thankful I am and appreciative of the gift that God has given. I'm not going to hold it in, but I want to share it with the lost and dying world. Lately in the morning, I've been uh, able to get on with a Zoom call to uh, the uh, board members some of the board members and some of the um, administrators, field administrators, and of course, Dr. Burge and Brother Lyons from the mission board. And we've taken prayer requests and had prayer time together. And, and, and that's a blessing. I, I, I'm thankful for that. But one of the things that we really have been making a matter of prayer is that we need laborers in the mission field. The fields are white on to harvest. The time is getting short. We're in the last days, I believe it, and we can see all the situation. But the problem is, is that we're so concerned with the here and now and what I want. That we've never fully yielded ourselves and say, God, what do you want out of this life that you've purchased? Mission field is... Losing. We're getting more missionaries coming back from the field than going to the field. Because we've become selfish. 
unconcerned and uncaring. And I think the Lord wants his people to say, here am I, Lord. If you'll send me, if you call me, I'm willing. I'm not saying God's going to call everybody. But what a way to demonstrate our thankfulness to him in purchasing this gift. The Bible says that I, I don't belong to me. I belong to him. I've been bought with a price. And what I need to do is say, Lord, whatever your will is for this that you've purchased, I'm willing to do it. Because I want to demonstrate to you how thankful I am that you've laid down your life, that you suffered like no man ever suffered so that I could have the wonderful gift and the hope, that blessed hope that's assured me. Do you ever think that of those that stood up that day and heard Peter on the day of Pentecost as he preached that sermon? And those thousands came to know him as Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine today how thankful they are standing in heaven? Can you imagine how thankful they must have been to Peter who was willing to take a stand and to share the gospel. Think of Philip. Philip out in the middle of the desert. One man, Ethiopian eunuch, riding in a chariot, not understanding what he was reading out of the scriptures. God said, go join yourself to him with a purpose to share my purpose. And Philip ran and said, do you understand what you're reading? He says, how can I except some man show me? And Peter climbed up into that chariot and began at the same scripture he was reading and shared with him that blessed gospel. And that Philip, uh, Ethiopian eunuch got saved and was baptized. And I'll guarantee you today, he's standing in heaven and he's so thankful that day that Philip Okay, was willing to share that story. Philip could have said there, oh, wait a minute, I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I'd have to run and catch up with the guy and I'm really too tired for that. It's too hot to do any exercising. I don't know if he'd listen to me. He could have made every excuse in the world, but he was thankful for what God had given him and he was not ashamed to share it with somebody else demonstrating his thankfulness. Think of all those great old missionaries that served all around the world. Back in those old days when they had to struggle. Those old days when they were ready to go to the mission field, they took a coffin and that was their shipping crate. They pay, placed everything that they owned, every worldly possession inside of that coffin because they said that when they went, they were not coming back. I'm trying to think. I think it was Adoniram Judson who labored for years without one convert. But he stayed faithful, stayed involved, stayed preaching. And finally God began to work and after years made such an impact upon the people. And I can imagine those people today as they're standing in the portals of glory said to that old missionary as he's in glory, oh, I'm so thankful you didn't quit. I'm so thankful you didn't give up. I'm so thankful that you stayed by the stuff. I'm so thankful that you were thankful and you were willing to demonstrate that thankfulness by sharing the gospel with a lost and dying tribe. Today they're rejoicing in heaven. I don't think there's any better way to show our thankfulness for our salvation than by sharing that blessed gospel with someone else. We share and demonstrate that thankfulness every time we promote, as it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11, the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That eternal purpose.
Are you promoting his purpose? And then lastly, this morning, I think we demonstrate our thankfulness by proclaiming his praises. Psalm 34, verse 1. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, we ought to praise him. We ought to thank him. Yes, we ought to by lips thank him. But there ought to be some more things involved in praise. That praise is involved in the way that I handle myself, in the way that I live, the way that I demonstrate my love for him. My praise is when I come together in the church house and lift up his voice and sing those praises unto him. My folks, listen to me. I get so upset when I look out and, and I'm not picking on anyone this morning, but I believe with all my heart the psalmist over and over and over again Throughout all of the Psalms, so I'd sing unto the Lord, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The Bible says that we ought to lift our voice in praise and in glory and in worship of Him. And when we look out and we see people standing without singing and without lifting up a voice and without praising Him, it bothers me that we're not demonstrating our thankfulness. We ought to be willing. You say, well, preacher, I don't have the best voice. I don't care. And God doesn't care. With God's ears, the worst voice is made perfect. Amen. Thankful Christians, I believe, are praising Christians. I want you to take your Bibles back to the book of Psalm as I'm about finished. And I want you to look at Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Look at verse number 7. Psalmist writing, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory awake. Psaltery and harp, I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. I will praise, I will sing, I will make that joyful sound. Look over at Psalm 100 very quickly. Psalm 100. Look at verse number 1. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? Singing. Singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Praise pleases God and he's worthy of our praise he's the only one that's worthy of our praise some guy I saw on, on Fox News this morning they were talking about certain plays of the weekend with certain football teams and yeah there were some great demonstrations of ability and all the rest and catching that winning uh, touchdown on the goal and right there and all those things man it it was amazing and people boy wasn't that wonderful wasn't that good boy look at how the ability of that man the gift is man but I want you to understand that's temporal junk and that doesn't do one thing to benefit my stand in heaven. Amen. Only God is worthy of our praise. And we ought to demonstrate our thankfulness by singing to him. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Oh, we ought to be thankful. Psalm 40, verse 3 says this. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. 
Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. The Bible says that he hath put a new song in my mouth. Not the song of the world, not the song of flesh, but the song of the blessings of God and the testimony of the gospel of what it's done. The Bible says he hath put a new song in my mouth and many shall see it and hear it and because of it fear God and many will trust the Lord Jesus Christ. That brings everything that I've said, promoting his purpose, practicing his presence, enduring all of the things. It brings it all into perspective because that's the way I demonstrate how thankful I am to God. So let me ask you this morning, when's the last time you demonstrated your thankfulness to him? It's one thing to say, thank you, Lord. But when's the last time you really showed him how thankful you are? I believe he wants that. I believe he deserves that. And it has to come out of a heart that's truly grateful. So is your heart really grateful today? Are you really thankful? Then what are you doing to demonstrate it? Father, thank you today for your goodness and grace. Oh, we are thankful. We are so appreciative of the wonderful gift of eternal life. Knowing that we have a home in heaven. For the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that song that was sung just a little while ago. It's only by the blood. Oh, we ought to be so thankful for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord, let us be a people that not just verbally say it. That's easy to do. But I pray that our, our appreciation would be so great that we would have to demonstrate that to you by proving your promises, by living by faith by certainly practicing your presence on a daily basis in our life, by promoting your purpose to, to a lost and dying world. Lord, here am I. Send me. Use me. Help me to be what you want me to be. And then by proclaiming your praises, help us today to be the kind of people that the world knows, not just by word, but by action, are thankful and appreciative for all that you do and have done. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder today how many would say, Preacher, I know that I'm a Christian. I know there's been a time in my life when by faith and faith alone, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. And I am so thankful for that. As a testimony, here's my hand all over the building. I am saved today and know it. God bless you. Thank you. you may put them down. Now I wonder how many of us would say, Preacher, I'm saved, I know it, and I am thankful. But to be honest, maybe I haven't demonstrated to God how thankful I really am. And I believe that's what I need to do, and I ought to do it. And so, Preacher, I wonder, would you just pray for me today that I would be involved in demonstrating my thankfulness Here's my hand all over the building today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many hands. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Anyone else before we pray? Here's my hand, preacher. Don't leave me out. I am thankful. But maybe I've just been remiss in demonstrating it. And today I just want to make sure that God knows, not just by lips, but by my very life, how thankful I am. Here's my hand. Anyone else before we pray? I see it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Thank you. God bless you. Then let me ask this. I wonder, and I don't know, but is there one here today that say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. I don't know if I died right now that I'd go to heaven. I might even be a church member like you were. I might even be involved in some ministry like you were but I've never had the real assurance that heaven's my home. And preacher, I wonder today, would you just remember to pray that I could get this thing settled and have that wonderful peace that comes from knowing it. Here's my hand all over the building. Anyone like that at all? Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Father, I'm thankful today that we can be thankful. 
I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for the victory over death. I'm thankful for the blood that has cleansed my sin. I'm thankful that I have a blessed hope. Oh, we could go on and on. But Lord, help me to be demonstrative of my thankfulness. Demonstrating to you how much I appreciate what you've done for me. Bless every hand that's been raised. Bless every heart that you've spoken to. And maybe today we just need to come to this old altar and say, Lord, I am thankful. But help me to demonstrate that to you. Show me what I can do to be demonstrating faithful in letting others know how appreciative I am of what you've done. Bless the invitation. Use it for your honor and glory, we ask. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Barry's going to come and lead us in a stanza of invitation. If you need to come, altars are open. Just get alone with the Lord. Why don't you come?